I am George DF, the games director behind the top-down game Lost Soul. Lost Soul is a top-down game about a young boy who's lost in a school, infested by demons, trying to find others like himself and has to escape while fighting off these demons. There is an underlying message to the game and that is based on mental health issues. He's lost in the school and he has to fight off his own demons, which he kills with light, which connotes to the idea of hope. He's finding others like himself which shows he is not alone and he's trying to save himself. We did this to spread a positive message and hopefully make some positive change. If this is our core game aspect, we made sure our visuals and sound were reflected of this, which I will go in depth into later on in this commentary. My role as games director was to ensure that the initial idea was fleshed out well and was ready to be taken into a team, which obviously would be changed and adapted on. I was also supposed to help in whatever area needed it most. During the research phase of the game, I helped with conducting focus groups, questionnaires, and surveys, as well as the analysis of all of these. This is to help us get a more realised idea of what our project would entail and what it would lead to. During pre-production, I had to ensure my team all knew what their roles would be about and what they should aim for, but I also wanted them to have creative freedom over their aspects. For instance, I told my artists what the colour palette of the game should be and told them the assets that would need to be done, and I let them get on with this area by themselves. Same with my sound engineer and my program, and I believe it worked. Once my team knew what to do, I focused on the planning area, so the budgeting, time schedule, asset lists, and other admin type tasks. This is to ensure that we can track the progress of the game and make sure we don't miss the deadlines. Once I got these out of the way, I helped with the concept art, mood boards, and influences. During production, I helped all roles and completely took the role of the UI artist and level designer, so my visual artist could focus on the actual game's art. I helped my audio engineer with references for what sounds should sound like as well as giving them feedback on the sounds that they recorded and edited. I helped my program with bugs and small less important scripts such as making objects float so they could get on more important mechanics. That was my role during this production and I believe I executed it well as the game has turned out very nicely. I believe the specific production role of level design was completed very well as some of the feedback we got from QA testing was that it was one of the longer games played which says a lot about our map size as it was not very large. I specifically designed the way the player progresses so they may find a locked door and then have to go back and find the key and then go back on themselves again so they're back at the locked door. This meant our game wasn't too large of a map but had no linear progression in, and is somewhat non-linear. This meant we did not need to develop a really large level and it took some of the weight and pressure off the rest of the team. The research that we undertook consisted of primary and secondary data. We put out surveys, questionnaires, surrounding some of the errors that as a team we could not make this decision on, such as the name of the game and other areas like that. We also conducted focus groups that got a lot more personalised data that was very detailed and helped us in many ways. For example, our demons were not going to be the darkest part of our game. Based on some feedback we got from the focus groups, we decided to change our minds and make the demons darker than everything else. This works very well with the message of our game as they are supposed to be the most impo imposing challenges our character would have ever faced in their life. The questionnaires and surveys gave us a general consensus on some areas of our game, like whether we should go for mental health as the underlying story, but I believe the focus groups were more of use. The secondary research that went into our game also helped shape it from the very beginning. Limbo was the biggest influence. The initial idea I was going to pitch was based off of Limbo, the colour palette, the ambiguous story and the tone. We had this in mind during production of the game, continuously looking at how Limbo looks and feels to play during concept phase and actually making the game. Another massive influence was Hyper Light Drifter as it was, had a much deeper message at its core than meets the eye. The developer of the game suffers from heart disease, which means he coughs up blood. This is in cutscenes in Hyper Light and it's quite emotional. I really admired how the developer, Alex Preston of Heart Machine, poured emotion and a deeper, more socially aware message into his game, rather than it just being about fun. We wanted to replicate this but with more of a limbo touch to it in the sense that the story is more ambiguous and also with more of a hyperlight art style to back it up. Those two games were our biggest influences but there were a few more such as That Dragon Cancer, another game with an emotionally driven story which we respected but we wanted it more ambiguous as mental health is a very sensitive topic. We did not want to misrepresent it nor did we want to trivialise it but we wanted it to be present in our game. If people played the game and were confused about the story, they could go on the internet, find theories, and like with Limbo, create some form of community. This is possible through ambiguity of story. I believe the secondary research was very influential on this production, as it shaped the art style, colour palette, and the storytelling method. The pre-production that went into the game was a lot of planning, concept art, and flowcharts. 
I made sure I did what I believe was the director's job. The asset lists, schedules, and helping out with every area where I could. Schedules and lists were incredibly important as it allowed us to track progress throughout the production and were there to keep us on that track so we can reach all deadlines and not miss anything. I believe I could have done this area slightly better by making each area more detailed, like the asset list and the schedule. This would have meant that I spent more time on it. However, I was spending quite a lot of time helping with our environmental concept art as we realised there were many restraints to t on time and needed to spread the workload. The visual artist focused on some really good character art and I believe this really helped us visualise the goal of our game. They then turned this into pixel art which made it into the final game. The programmer planned out what scripts would need to be completed and worked on during production as well as assisting with the storyboards to again help streamline the whole process. The audio engineer made sure he knew what sounds need were needed, how he was going to record them and made sure he understood the software to use which was F. When we were finished with the pre-production phase, we had to prepare a pitch with a presentation to go alongside it and present this to a panel. This meant that each of us had to be prepared with a script which covered our area. For my part, I spoke about the story of our game and its meaning. I also spoke about how research has influenced the game and the budgeting of our game. The visual artists, audio engineer and programmer went over their respective areas. The feedback we got from our pitch presentation was incredibly useful. We got one of our main mechanics from it, which was a note mechanic to help push the story of our game. The panel thought we needed to push the story much more clearly than we had already made it obvious, as this would help get the message out there. This has made it into our game, and we believe it is very well done. They also suggest we add areas of colours without lifting messages in it. We would have added this, but we needed to get the base mechanics in our game at the time. This area I will develop on in the improvement section of the commentary. I believe as a team, we started off not in the best place. We took quite a long time to get into motion and work effectively. Honestly, this would go down as my fault, and I'm going to accept that responsibility. I should have been much more clear with my directions and organisation. However, I believe that when we did start working well, we did not slow down. We put in our best efforts, and I'm very proud and happy with the production our team made, and the effort that went into it. People praise the visuals when they play the game, and they think the sound is crisp. Nobody faults the mechanics of the game either. So all in all, I'm happy with what happened. If we started out as we finished, it would have been amazing though, and I believe we could have done an even better job and made an even better game. However, this blame, again, lays on my shoulders. When problems arose, I made sure I assisted on them as much as I could, and I consulted the rest of the team if we were still stuck, or if I needed another opinion on whatever was happening. For instance, we had a really bad bug where the demons would not kill the player. I made sure I worked with my programmer to fix this issue, and we kept iterating on the issues until they were fixed. I learned from this project that teamwork is only effective if communication between the team is clear and the games director sets out all work and tasks in advance so everyone can manage themselves. I would definitely have a different approach from the start if I was a director again. When we were developing the game idea, we realised we had two options for the style of sound effects. Realistic sound, or sound that are reflective of the pixel art style. We decided to go for more realistic sound effects for our game, and I believe we made the right choice. It is much easier to task for the sound engineer to record sound effects if they are realistic as you can use real objects around you to make them. As well as I believe within the context of the game, the realistic sound effects can help solidify the idea that mental health is a very real issue. The sound engineer created all of the sound effects by thoughtly processes to use objects in various different ways to make a believable sound effect. They were recorded with a Tascam and a Rhodes microphone. Once recorded, the sound files are taken into Audition to be edited, and then from there taken into the software FMOD which is integrated into Unity to allow for easier sound implementation into our game. I believe it worked very well as the sounds in our game are very crisp and have good timing. There are a lot of issues initially with FMOD, only the sound engineer could hear the audio in our game, and we were not sure why, but it turns out that the issue was that the files of the game had to be in the D drive, which is where the FMOD location was. From this project we learned that sound can make or break games. They are just not the same without sounds or with terrible sounds. And I believe the sound engineer did a great job in this regard, as it does not break any immersion in our game with sound effects. When we were starting to develop our art style, I focused on giving my visual artist some guidelines on what the art should be like. I explained the colour palette and the size of the canvas to be used. This was to make sure that it was reflective of the meaning of a game, otherwise nobody would understand it, but I also wanted to make sure they had creative freedom within these limits. The reason we followed a monochrome colour palette was to show how people suffering from mental health issues feel. Sometimes they feel empty and hopeless, and we made sure that the colour reflected that. The demons are the darkest part of the game based off of 
feedback from focus groups. And this shows how deep and tormenting they are. The map was grey to show how the world is quite composing and can feel really empty sometimes. We made sure that the light attack that the player uses lights up the floor of the map to show that hope can overcome these issues. I believe grounding the art style of our game within the meaning of it has not even been a limiting factor at all. I believe it has made our game that much more powerful and more original. It has forced us to think more creatively and on our toes at all times to try to think how we can make every little aspect of our game link back to its meaning, to pay homage to it and also show that these things are real. And my visual artist did a great job executing this. The software we use to make all of our art is called Asprey. It's a specialised pixel art software and it can help with animations, so we use it for that. We also use it for the environment, props and UI. When I was making the UI for the game, I made sure I stuck to the colour scheme that we set out at the start to make sure the game feels like a finished product. The menu went through many iterations, but at the start it was quite bland and with no animation in it. The background was a plain image that came from some concept art that I did, and we really quite liked this because we thought we could make it background for our menu. However, it was really cluttered as it was quite a detailed bit of art. So I decided to redo the whole thing and make it an animation with a bit of fire that illuminates eyes behind it. This is reflective of the game and how you're always being watched and attacked from all angles. There weren't too many problems when it came to the visual art of our game. There was a small dispute at the beginning of our game. We were unsure what to do with the colour scheme. Monochrome sounded good, but we also wanted to add some colour. However, in the long run I think we made the right decision to go with monochrome as it reflected the game's story much more. The colour palette only caused us one problem, and that was when we were trying to discern different objects from the environment. For instance, we couldn't tell the difference between a table and maybe the floor, because the colours blended very well. So we decided to increase our colour palette size to make it more easy to distinguish different objects. That was about it when it came to problems with the game's colour. From this I've learned that you can make a very interesting game with, even without colour, and I feel like I've learned so much more about what colour can do for a game's message. When working with my programmer we were trying to make the game feel really responsive and easy to pick up. Not much complexity and no constant HUD to distract the player and make the game more immersive. This is so a wider audience can pick up our game and play it. All of the gameplay mechanics are fairly simple. Flashlight is an area attack and has no delay to make the player feel like they are in control. This also feeds into the meaning of the game. The game will fly at you very quickly, with no quick changes in directions, which means the player has to react quickly, but it's not too punishing. The demons die instantly, and so do you, unless you have fallen. Which makes the game very easy to understand, and the player will realise this instantly. The player just has to make contact with a key to pick it up, and walk up to a door to open it, reducing the amount of HUD that we need. The follower mechanic works very similar to the key mechanic, and you just have to make a contact with the object for the desired effect of the script. All of this means our game is very easy to pick up and is very easy to understand and makes for a very short learning curve. This is ideal when considering what we want to achieve with our game. We want as many people to play it and pick up the game so they can understand the meaning and spread a good message. I believe we did a good job at balancing the game's difficulty as demons are easy to kill but can jump out and catch you off guard. The game really rewards good reflexes and concentration. One small mistake and you go right back to the beginning. This also helps people to pay attention and understand our game more, and realise the small little details that we implemented. The scripts were made using the C Sharp language, and were made within Visual Studios, which helps with laying out all of the scripts. We iterated on all our scripts as we went, as the game developed, and bugs developed. And we worked on those together, but for the most part, my programmer focused on the main mechanics, and I worked on less important scripts, such as making keys and locks float, so they are more appealing to go towards. The menu script and the game ending script were also made by me, as they were fairly short and simple. I believe this worked very well as we achieved what we set out to do in the time limit, and I think I believe splitting up the workload as we did really helped us get this far and reach our goals. Some of the bugs we did face were very challenging. One bug in particular made it so demons couldn't kill you, but would hit you and then run away and you would not die. It was kind of funny while it lasted, as it was almost as if the roles were reversed. This bug took a long time to fix as it was very strange as it came out of nowhere, but it was mainly to do with an issue that was created with the colliders and when we changed them, as in the script they were called as collider but in reality they were a trio. Another strange bug we had was when the demons started to rotate in all axes when approaching, it was an easy fix in the end. I experienced a few bugs on making the menu and sometimes my progress just would not save. This was more of a unity issue rather than my scripting issue. 
However, in the end, I managed to get the menu working pretty well, except there was this one bug that didn't show up whilst we were making the game, only when we exported it. This bug meant that the controls menu just did not show up at all. You can get into the menu and you can leave it, but nothing would be there. It really makes the product feel less finished. And I would definitely want to fix it, it would be a very short fix as well. By working closely with my programmer, I learned that the coding aspect of games making is quite rewarding and quite fun. I also learned that working with someone who knows coding can teach you a lot rather than just watching tutorials online. All in all, I think my programmer did a great job. If we had one more week to work on this project in production phase, it would purely be ironing out the small visual bugs that we have, which annoyingly were fixed by our visual artists. But Unity teams had an issue, and we ended up losing the progress. I would also have made the story much more clear, and maybe added a few more notes and easter eggs in the game. There was a small issue that I mentioned previously in the menu screen, which only showed up once we exported. And I would definitely need to fix this, as it really does make the project feel less finished. But it would be a very quick fix. Another issue we could fix is how the followers overlap once you have both of them following each other. This can be very distracting and break the immersion, so we need to fix that. We were working on the fix for it, but we ran out of time, sadly. The changes I would make would be very small, as I'm very happy with this production, and I believe my team did a great job. I think our game is able to make a really good positive impact on a very serious issue, and if that's the case, we achieve exactly what we set out to do.